So sometimes people, when they start watching my videos, ask themselves, if the official history is really that wrong, then how come the well-proven and documented timelines of the individual countries, as it is in the mainstream history, they all match together very well? So in this episode, I'm going to show you that most of this well-documented and proven events are fictional or semi-truth. They are not really well proven and not at all documented. The proof of all these individual timelines of the various countries at the end boils down to many men wearing expensive suits and impressive titles talk about these things as if they are undeniable truth. And that's all the convincing talk, nothing more. In this episode, we'll take Myanmar, also known as Burma, to show you how the Department of the History Fabricators sent its people to each and every small nation to tamper with their history. The magical valley of Bagan is full of countless temples. According to mainstream history, these temples belong to an ancient kingdom and the dating is established according to the Burmese royal chronicles, which according to Wikipedia, the encyclopedia of every good sheep, are detailed and continuous Chronicles. If you continue reading down that very same Wikipedia page, you'll find out that the chronicles in question are not actually contemporary historic chronicles. They aren't in any way either continuous or detailed. We don't need to go to alternative sources. Let's read you quotes from the very same page. First quote. The majority of the chronicles did not survive the country's numerous wars. Next quote. The chronicles provide little information about the general situation of the kingdom. Next quote. Nor were they written from a historical perspective, but rather uh, to provide legitimation according to religious criteria. Next quote. Many of the chronicles are yet to be studied. Means they haven't even read them. <clears throat> Next quote. Many of the early chronicles did not survive at all. Next quote. The earliest surviving chronicles were not even the official chronicles of their own era. Well, so it means they are from some other era. And it becomes even more clear in the next quote, which reads, The chronicles were most probably 16th century copies of the original chronicles and moreover, incomplete and partial. Well, we should be thankful that they were very honest by inserting most probably, which means that uh, they could be written much later, for example, when they were fabricating the history of Myanmar. The Valley of Bagan is home of a couple of thousand temples. We are told that they are some thousand years old. 
But the buildings themselves don't seem to match the tales that we are being told about them. Now let's have a look at the doors of these temples. Those of you who have seen old buildings falling apart will um, very easily figure out that um, the deterioration of this wooden door is fully consistent with the deterior overall deterioration of the cement and the buildings, the brick buildings uh, outside. And it really doesn't look like uh, that these wooden and uh, iron parts were added later on during the restoration. So these really seem to be the original doors, after all. So how did they manage to survive 1,000 years? Hmm, not only the wood, but also the iron would have definitely deteriorated after that length of time. After all, as you can see on the photographs, it's an area with very lush greenery. Because it's definitely warm. It's moist and everything would have rotted. Here again, you see the aging of the door is fully consistent with the surface that it's attached to. These are the original doors. Also, look at the art on them. If this was a modern illustration, they wouldn't be nearly as nice. And one more point which confirms that the temples of Bagan are much more recent than they are telling us. This is the palace of the last king, who was of course removed so that Myanmar can become part of the parasitic cobweb. But um, look at the overall state of the building, and in particular the scale of preservation of the cement work on the top of the bricks. Actually, it doesn't look that much newer than the rest of the temples. And probably all those thousands of temples in the valley are just slightly older than this 19th century building. So what happened in reality is that those very same colonial forces arrived. They destroyed the beautiful culture destroyed or took away their authentic historic books and then paid somebody to write a new history and called those newly created books copies of the old chronicles and then to cast everything to even deeper oblivion they said oh this was thousand years ago Certain, a very important aspect of the Burmese history is not denied by the mainstream penguins, they just forget to mention it. And that's the fact that this type of architecture, this type of culture was brought to Burma by foreigners. This is no longer Bagan, although it looks exactly like it. This is in Ayutthaya, Thailand. The same technique bricks and on the top cement. This is Indonesia. Same style, same technique of building. In the previous episode we saw these very same temples in Cambodia and this is the same, just it's in Indonesia. Absolutely the same technique. Each and every brick of unique shape and size. More of Indonesia and it's like this almost all over Southeast Asia. These people 
at one point belonged to a single very large community. These were not separate isolated kingdoms as the penguins are trying to create the impression because after all the people were simple so how could they travel so much to maintain an empire thousands of kilometers long. And everywhere the technique was the same. Bricks dressed with cement to imitate stone. And always it was brought by foreigners. This is the traditional Burmese housing, entirely made of wood, different style. The common Burmese people live more or less in the Stone Age till date. How could have they manufactured the cement with such a high quality that would last 1000 years? They were taught by foreigners how to do it. Those very same foreigners that used this technique all through Europe and all the way to Teotihuacan in America, the very same cement, the same technique, and always it is foreigners. And not just the technique, the style as well. Also look at the wooden carvings. They are practically identical with the same wooden carvings, for example, found all over Siberia. and even South America. And these are some European examples of casting stone imitations on the top of bricks from cement or geopolymer or similar mixtures from Pompeii, which was buried in an eruption, by the way, apparently three, four hundred years ago and not in the far, far away past, but that's subject for another episode. So why do they pay penguins to create the false impression that, first of all, these were separate kingdoms all over Southeast Asia and uh, second of all, the cultures were at their prime 1,000 years ago and not a few hundred years ago. The main reason is to disconnect us even more from the universal laws of goodness, which were the essence of what these foreigners or survivors were spreading when they reach these local populations of relatively simple people. It's not the building techniques from whatever little is remained from these almost lost cultures. Always the main point for them is the spirituality. The idea that we get born into these costumes, these human bodies, for education. And what is the thing that we have to learn? What we have to learn is how, under all circumstances, always to remain fixed in the qualities of pure goodness. And this cobweb of evil, which has recently entangled the full world, is not to be hated because evil is one of our teachers. If we hate it, we fail the test. Evil is testing us. Passing the test means to be able to see through the illusions and lies of the evil, pass through them, remain unaffected. And then once we have learned this, we will no longer need the evil to test us. One of the extremely clever tactics used by this evil cobweb to grab us and turn us into part of this cobweb is to make us believe in the idea of revenge. Once we buy into this propaganda that evil can bring about goodness, we are lost. We'll have to repeat the lesson again and again and get tested by the evil cobweb again and again. In the past, people were tested by the evil cobweb as well, but at least they knew 
from childhood whatever I just told you. Their ideas of good and evil were not as distorted as ours. So they were better informed about what's going on, while we, currently, we take much harder test. To pass it, we must have the strength to reject all the nonsense that we've been fed since childhood. We'll need to have the strength to, get, to go against the current, because 99% percent of the people currently don't even see any problem with living in a parasitic cobweb. So that's the main reason for removing the history, making us take a hard test under blind conditions, so to say. But there are other aspects connected with building. The obvious question is, how could those presumably primitive people make cement stronger than ours. Although the buildings are not 1,000, but merely, let's say, three or 400 years old, still, how were they manufacturing cement of a higher quality than us, without trashing the earth with pollution? And other questions much like that, there's evidence that they were much healthier and had far superior medicine than us. Look at these buildings. This is from Japan, built some hundred years ago. These blocks of flats were built for the senior managers of the Mitsubishi company. They used the best uh, cement uh, we manufacture, and uh, look at that after hundred years. Since the takeover, the citizens of Myanmar no longer own the riches of their own land. It belongs to international corporations and the beautiful culture of the survivors is replaced by the ugly parasitic reality. All that is called progress, development, improvement, international health and a transition to a better society.